The most important relationship at a football club is between the supporters and the players and the team, and, and which you know I'm part of the team. You know, it can't just be a transaction relationship. They pay the money and then come and watch and whatever. I think you know all people care about is football and results, but at the same time they want the people that represent the club to be human and to care, because ultimately you want the supporters to be proud of their team. You can't win all the time. Is there anything else you can do to go, OK, I, I like this team, I like this club, I like what it stands for. Um, I'm prepared to support it when things go wrong, when, it, you know, when things aren't quite so good. There's still something going on there. I think that's, that's important. your relationship with the fans, Graham, how would you say that is now as we approach your 100th game in charge? Uh, well, I always think it's been positive, generally. I keep off social media and I keep away from uh, newspapers that will, you know, the dissenting voices are always the most powerful and loud. But generally the people I've met have always been really supportive, they can see what we've been trying to do. But there'll be some, you know, that will, that will because we've not won or we're not winning enough, that will want to change that will want to do something else you know I think the last time we had a crowd in before the crowds came back it was some bloke shouting at me that time to go now Potter you know it's, that's how it is um, but I think generally been, they've been brilliant the supporters really good. Is it different for you now as a Premier League head coach the pressure the stress that kind of comment that comes your way? I think you get that um, wherever you are in whatever league um, in the first two years in Ossesund, people were saying he's no use and send him home. I suppose the Premier League, the level goes up because of the interest from you guys, the media, and the Premier League, it's harder to win, generally. So, you know, winning, winning keeps the wolf from the door. But if you don't win, the wolf is getting closer to the door. That's how it is. I know what you mean. Um, because as I've always said, you know, how you convince people that you're on the right path is winning. And um, if you're not winning, then you have to, it's, it's a little bit harder. You have to endure the, the pressure. You have to endure the, the criticism. You have to endure all that. The noise from out there, everybody's got an opinion. It doesn't necessarily make it any easier, but I think it's just part of the challenge. You don't sign up for this if you if you're expecting something different. And then the key thing is, what, what do you let in your world? You can't let the unbalanced and educated opinion into your world, essentially. My ex-chairman said to me, there's no point arguing with stupid people. And I said, oh, why, why is that? And he said, well, because they're stupid. <laughs> and it was quite a, quite, a, <laughs> sort of quite a point to make, but uh, uh, I, I could see where he's coming from, yeah. 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 Who do you listen to then? I mean, who do you fall on? Who do you, who advises you? Who do you go to in those moments when you're seeking a little bit of help, support, guidance? The staff at the club, the people that, that we work with on a professional level and, and my family. And then I'm lucky that my friends and my friends that have been my friends since I was seven years old. So they don't care about, they can say whatever they want to me. They don't care about football or Premier League or any of this nonsense. They just tell me how it is and that's good. I'm aware of the bubble we're in, but it also I can, I can be outside of it. I've got two six-year-old boys at home, an 11-year-old that keep life very simple. So again, they can, if I want some mindless conversation, I, I can, if I'm not getting it from Billy Reid, I can get it from <laughs> my two kids, three kids. You mentioned the players. Um, clearly, man management is a big part of the, of the role. What do you get? Why is it so important to you, the satisfaction that you get from managing the players individually and making them better as players and that holistic approach which you seem to have with them? Football's about winning. We know that. It's a results business. And ultimately you know that you're going to lose your job or gain a job because of results, essentially. Um, but I think what, why I started to do this job was because I think you can make a difference, you can help people. Ultimately, that's what it's about for me. So I'll look back on my life and I won't look back on necessarily wins or results. I'll look back on the people that I've worked with. And that's, if that's the starting point of everything, then you know, that, that's, the challenge then is to combine that with, with what the club wants and what the, the aims of the organisation are, which is to win football matches and win enough football matches. 
I look back on my time in Ossesund, I look back on the time in Swansea, I look back on the time in Brighton and the people that I've been with, the, the, the guys that I've worked with, they'll be mo more important to me than anything else. Burn, look at this, Albion pouring forward. Trossard, here comes Trossard into the area, can he pick the cross? He can! And Albion have won it at the dead! Three points for the Seagulls! There must be one particular highlight that you've had, maybe of those first 99, I mean, there's some, I mean, some incredible victories. Um, what stands yeah. out? And the result is a, a really important part of that because we're, we're here to compete, it's about winning, and we have to deal with the result, and, but I just, and don't get me wrong, my weekend, my life is a lot better when you've won. So we all know that that's what you, you want to try and do, it's just the, how you get that result is, is why I refer to the people are the most important bit. I think um, in terms of results, I, I still say that the result against Arsenal, uh, first lockdown, was a massive result. Callister drops his shoulder, threaded into Morpé. There's the flick, Morpé could be in here, Morpé! Oh, he's found the winner! Possibly the last kick of the game, the bench is up! Everyone around Neil Morpé! You know, at the end of the first season, lockdown, restart, Arsenal, you know, you look at the home games we had, you look at the fixture list we had, you think, well, we've got Man, Man City, Liverpool, Man United at home. They're the games where you need your supporters, we're going to have nobody there. It's completely not in our favour, that situation, and Arsenal. So to get that result was massive, and the way we did it as well, I mean, if there was the supporters there, the roof would have come off, because it was, you know, I think there the was shouts being heard around Brighton because it was all the games were televised. So that was a massive result, I think. I think for the team, for the players at the time and the club to a certain extent was the Man City game. Um, because to, to, to beat a team of that quality and, and with the crowd, although it wasn't a full crowd, was a, was a really good for the team, I think. What's it like in your dressing room? What are you, like? you seem so calm when you speak to us. I know you can't tell us, reveal all the secrets, but what's it like in there? How would you describe your style of management within the dressing room? Yeah, I, th I think, yeah, calm's not a bad word, although it's emotional, football is, so there's times where you're not, that's for sure. And I think the key thing is, when you're not, it's like, is there a purpose for it and are you helping the team? That's always my, my thought. Because nobody wants uh, a cardboard cutout. Nobody responds to that. It doesn't, that's not going to work. So, I, but I think... And if you're, you know, if you're up and down and you're shouting and screaming all the time, then in the end that loses its, its, its effect. And I think at the same time, if you're calm and collected all the time, it can lose its effect. Sometimes you need, you need frustration, you need anger, you need, you need disappointment because uh, we all feel that. It's just how you do it and, 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 and how you can yeah, help the team. So do you have to be ruthless as a Premier League head coach, do you think? I think whenever you're a head coach or a manager, that you have to, you, you know, you're responsible for the club. The club's the most important thing. Yeah. So you, you've got to make decisions that are in the best interests of the club. And sometimes that's not the player. You know, the player might want to stay. And you have to have a sit down conversation with him, sorry, we're not renewing your contract. It, and that could mean employment, that could mean his family, that could mean his family moving. They're not very pleasant conversations. They're not ones that I like to have. Not, I don't enjoy those conversations, but I also know that the responsibility is mine to have those conversations. You've got to, you've got to do that. But ultimately, somebody has to make the decision. I won't make it. I don't sit in a dark room on my own. I use my staff and, and get a, a collaborative idea. But the, the book stops with me because of my role, and that's just the responsibility of it. And what about that support that you've had, particularly your close management team, and of course wider across the club over your first period at this uh, football club what has, what's that been like and have you had you know the support you require need yeah I would have to say of course yes um, and it's been a real challenging two and a half yeah. years really in terms of I mean it's been unique hasn't it on and off the pitch for me personally um, you know some some obviously some challenging moments and then and then lockdown in and out and the general job which is you know the Premier League and, and where you are in the league table can can affect the narrative around you at any given moment. At the moment, it's quite positive. This time last year, it was quite negative. If you look at the performance of the team, not not a massive difference, if we're honest. But the, where the league table is and where the result is can dictate the 
the, the narrative. And that's, that's why you need calm, like I said, object, we, you kind of get a better, a better chairman uh, in terms of being objective, um, having the best interests of the club, but not listening to the noise, not listening, not not getting caught up on this emotional roller coaster, which is which is emotional football. So we can't. He's he's the starting point for everything, calms everything down, and then everybody else can work in a in a in a good way. A new look for the new season with that rather outstanding beard. Is the one thing that Graham Potter is going to do differently at this stage going forward than? Not the jacket and the beard, clearly, but like the other things. You know, is there, is there, you know, is there something you do a little bit differently now that maybe you you didn't before you joined the club? Yeah, I'm sure there are lots of things. I can understand now why clubs look to hire people with Premier League experience in the Premier League. I can understand why that is, and I can understand why taking a, a manager from the Championship is risky because of the unknown of what the Premier League is. If you're one of the the lower teams in the Premier League, they're one of the ones, you know, you're fighting for the points and, and you can go a long time without winning. And that can psychologically affect you, the players, the staff, the clubs, everything, you know? So I think that challenge is, is really, I probably didn't understand that as much at the time. And maybe naivety is a good thing, but uh, that's some, certainly something that I've learned from. And consequently to that, you know, celebrating the wins and enjoying the wins and not complaining about the wins. Sometimes my brain is a bit of a perfectionist, so even when you win, you think, oh, we should do this better, we should do that better, we should do that better, we should do that better. But actually, you need to enjoy, because as we said earlier, you know, winning is still nice, it's important, it's, it's what we're here for. So you can't, although it's about people and helping people improve and people get better, and win, you know, it's also about being in the moment, really. Life is about that as well, which was, I think was something we've also learned over these last two and a half years, that when you win, yeah, you can always improve, but it's nice to win as well.